Welcome, welcome everybody back to Nine's Corner. I hope this video is finding you in good health. I wanted to talk about the C-19 because this morning I was going through YouTube and I happened across Perez Hilton and I was shocked at the misinformation that he was putting out. He was going, oh, I don't know if, you know, they're going too far or this is just, you know, alarmist. And it's like, wow, Trump and his administration have misinformed, confused, and it's to the point where this is no longer, you know, funny. It's, it's scary. Where is the media? Why isn't somebody saying, no, push back? Like, this is not okay. You should not be having an audience right now. China, who did, uh, I mean, really strict and probably beyond strict um, regulations with their people, but their numbers have gone down. And in China, you know, if you look to China, and that's the epicenter where it started, and they're serious. I mean, they're doing their research and stuff. And they've come to realize that, you know, it's all about air circulation. They had a person get infected by another person from 4.5 meters away. And there was no contact, no coughing or anything of that. And they've had a couple of cases where they realized that in closed places where the air wasn't being circulated properly, that, you know, that they were getting infected. So you're talking about the travel industry. You're talking about cruise ships and planes and trains and automobiles and taxis and places where we gather. And the frustrating part is that people don't seem to be taking it serious. I mean, China has done a huge containment. They're doing major testing. And here over in the Western world, you know, the Western countries, we're not doing as much as we should. And I'm sorry to say the U.S., Donald Trump, I mean, it's beyond doing a disservice to his people. This has just gone beyond where it should be. It's in scary zone. It is a pandemic at this point. And the fact is that people know about how it gets spread. And the fact, you know, you look to China and say, okay, these are all the things that they've done. And they were able to manage to contain. They are still huge loss of life. Fortunately, even though like 500 children were infected, there was no deaths reported. It goes from like, you know, when you're in your 70s to your 90s, you're looking at anywhere from 8 to 15% being um, taken from this virus. And as you go younger, it gets a little bit less, but it's still more than the common cold. And the, the, the way that it's transmitted, it's in the air and it can stay in the air for a long time. It can stay on surfaces, even warm surfaces, for three to five days. It stays in human feces and urine for three to five days. So... It is extremely important to have good bathroom habits and for, you know, if you have children or if you had the elderly. I worked in home care for many years and there's a lot to it. And I mean, think about all the jobs that are involved with garbage pickup and, um, you know, people who work with the sewers and work, you know, plumbers. I mean, it affects so much and people aren't taking it seriously. And I watched Wendy Williams, who... Looks like she's so confused. There's something going on with her, like something. Um, she was like, I don't understand. I'm confused. I don't know. And I'm thinking, you have a platform to talk to millions of people and you can't do the research yourself or get your, you know, your minions to do the research and, you know, be a platform for truth to, you know, support people. <sighs> Guys, it's really time that we need to spread the word of self-containment, taking care of ourselves, doing, like, you know, I'm not saying go crazy, but because there's such a poor response and poor communication from the government, that makes it more scary. There's more chance of it spreading and it is going to kill people. And the more that people don't get together and actually do something, it's going to become larger and then it's going to become to the point where we can't contain it and then we just got to flow with it. So it's time for action now. So let's just look over the next couple of weeks, like maybe let's look into March going into April of how the coronavirus is going to, how it's going to come through on the Western front. Because, you know, in China and Hong Kong, I mean, they're, they are doing tests and they are being so proactive. Um, and, you know, at least I think, you know, if some of the countries are being reactive, maybe like Canada, but then you have 
the U.S. and they're just, what, what virus? It's like, because what you do, what we do, it's no longer, we don't have, we're not separated by borders anymore. We are one world. I don't like that one world order because that scares me. I'm not even going to get into that, but we really are. At this point, we have to make it together and we have to rise up as a people, especially when the government is not doing what's best for the people and they're only doing what's best for the pharmaceutical companies and, you know, covering up their numbers to, to you know, because I guarantee you the U.S. numbers are not real. Not real at all. They're not, they're, how can they be real? There's been no testing. And then it's like, well, who's going to get tested? Who's going to afford the test? Are they going to be given out for free? So let's have a look over the next few months. So one, two, three. Sorry to get on my soapbox, guys, but I'm concerned. We have seven of cups. This is illusion and delusion. This is people not taking it seriously. There's people that are taking it seriously. Um, it's sort of like there's this... It's like the U.S. is split. It's like they're split politically, you know? It's you're a dem or you're, you're blue or red. And if you're blue, then you're going to go right after this virus and be, you know pushing for it. And then if you're Republican, you're going to say, no, no, don't worry. Everybody's being okay. You know, listen to your leader, do as your leader says to the point where you have people saying, no, this is a hoax and not real. And this leaves a lot of avenues. There's seven avenues this can go down and it can go to total destruction, to total peace, depending on how things are going to work out over the next few months the ten of pentacles this is going to be a difficult time on resources on finances on food on product it's going to be hard on the industries especially the travel industries um there's going to be um a surge and the stock market is going to have some major um major crashes during this next few months because it's just going to be reflective of what the world is doing. And, you know, the reality is the less um, transparent the U.S. is, then not only ha they're, they're losing, they're losing their spot in the world. They really are. Um, Trump has made a mockery of the POTUS and it's to the point where people can't believe. Over the next few months... Thank God we see the Two of Cups. People are going to come together. There's going to be some realization of uh, the reality of it. And on a good note, um, the U.S. and a lot of the Western world, Canada, Australia, we have good Medicare, uh, not med, we have good medical people. We have good hospitals um, and we have uh, good hygiene habits. And I think with information and really pushing that it's an obnoxious thing to do but it really needs to be done because people aren't aren't reflective of what the importance is i would have so much more respect for wendy williams if she had come out and said look i'm not having an audience for the next little while because your health is more important than me having claps like that would have been like a wow that's what we need so guys, we need to get serious about it. So I'm going to whoo, let that go. And we're going to look into Harry and Meghan as the Duke and Duchess of Sussex have uh, been doing their farewell in England, which is very interesting. And I did their numerology and... Interestingly, uh, they both have the nine, which is they both have um, humanitarian desires. They both strongly feel in service to people. Now, that can be on different levels because Harry is a one, so he likes to take action and he likes to be the center of attention. He always has been. Megan is a double four, so she is very structured. Um, 
she lives and dies in her head. Um, so her actions are very much thought out. And that could be difficult because she's very, very, like with the double four, she's very, very controlling. Whereas Harry wants his freedom and likes his freedom. He's very independent. Um, but she has the three, so she has a good sense of humor. She has a good way of making him laugh when things are down. Um, over the next uh, few years, it's going to be hard. They are going to be arguing a lot behind the scenes. We may even hear about it because she's a double four and very controlling. He's a one, but he's all about home and family. So I think there's going to be a lot of conversations dealing with the leaving England and what they've done and how he feels about it. And she's going to be very controlling of everything that gets done. And because she's so controlling, I would not be surprised. And it would be a blessing if she were to have another baby this year. Um, because of her numbers, the way that they're set out, that's very possible. Um, they have a lot of really good numbers together. Um, he has a very strong, like he has a double six, so he has a very strong bond to his family. And that's not just with Megan and, and their son, Archie. This is to the Queen, to England, to the people of England. Um, and that's going to be a major... Um, threshold for them. So I think based on their numerology, if they can make it through the next, you know, five or six years, it's a good possibility that they've built enough foundation and enough conversation that they'll move on and possibly, you know, try to find some kind of balance that works for both of them. I will say as a Canadian, I'm very glad not to be fit in the bill for their security. It's offensive to me. Very offensive. But that's done, so that's over with. Um, but uh, they're going to have a difficult time of it, you know. And Harry's used to having his iris wipe for him. So even though he, he knows how to be a commoner, he's used to the highlight, high life. And he is going to miss that. So let's just have a look over the next past, present, and future to see how things are going to go over the next year or so. So in the past, you've got the King of Pentacles. This is Harry being um, secured by Meghan, not the other way around. Harry is the take action. He's the rescuer to Meghan, and she lets him play that part very, very well. And she is the structure that Harry needs in his life. So this is in the past. This is a good foundation. Presently, there's temperance. This is showing that they are having to really do um, a lot of work to keep things balanced. Um, and it's in all aspects of their lives because they're, they're having a very five year. And that's excitement and adventurous, but it's also ups and downs and your highs are extremely highs and your lows are extremely lows and obviously this has been a crazy year for them or a crazy couple of years having a child and getting married having getting married having a child and then all of a sudden up and moving out of England so there's a lot a lot a lot of balance needed here and in the future oh no 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 okay five of cups um this is Harry uh Harry is very is going to have a very difficult time over the next year um, dealing with his love for Megan and Archie and what he has started and with what he's turned his back on and what he's lost. Um, him and his brother, they were such an inspiration. And for anybody who, you know, lived through, stayed home from school to watch, um, his parents get married. See, I'm not sure if I stayed home to watch them get married or if it was when Bo and Hope on Days of Our Lives got married, but whichever one, I stayed home maybe for both of them. Um, but this is Harry having a really difficult time this year. Let's just... Yeah. Uh, he's going to come to... He's going to, you know, be um, there to rescue Megan... 
Megan's going to be going through some difficulties this year because she is very structured and very controlling. And that doesn't make, make her a bad person. It just makes her very controlling. And that can work for some people. But for Harry, that's going to be a difficult one. And this year is going to be um, an interesting one because his heart is in England and he is mentally dealing with the relations that have been um, cut. So with that, I'm going to say thank you very much and wishing you light for your darkness. Have a great day. Guys, take care and listen to the news. Do your research.